So to get started here, I thought it'd be a lovely idea to just get a bit of your story, to get the, the background behind the person we see on the festival streams and on the on the videos and so on, but, and the people who are lucky enough to have seen you live. You know, who is this person? How have they got to where, the, where they've got yeah. to? When did you first realise that music was going to be a really important thing in your life? Um, I, um, I got forced into piano lessons when I was really young and then kind of gave up by the time I was about nine or ten because it wasn't very cool it happens a lot yeah. doesn't it yeah. Yeah. The yeah. parents forcing yeah, kids yeah. into regimented yeah, lessons yeah. <laughs> and then we in school it was always kind of battle of the bands things like that i wasn't really very good at anything but i always wanted to be involved in it were you the weird the weird electronics kid in a school full of guitar guitar playing you know um musicians not really i didn't really discover electronic music until i was about 14 um and then I got some secondhand decks off eBay when I was 15 for my birthday. Um, and that was kind of around the time when I really started digging into what dance music was. Mm. So you got your secondhand decks. What are you playing at this point? Like 15th birthday parties and yeah, things I did, like this? Yeah, I did, I did a lot of, I did like everybody's birthday parties in my school. 15th, 16th birthdays. That was a fun period. <laughs> <laughs> I bet it was a fun period. I yeah, bet. yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah. But you loved it. So you're, you're mm -hmm. playing chart music, I'm going to guess. And... No, I was, playing, I was playing all sorts of like weird and wonderful stuff. I, at, the, at that time, I didn't really have an understanding of how to play to a crowd at all. So it was just kind of whatever cool stuff I'd found on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, proper internet kid there yeah, with yeah. your music. <laughs> all right then, so you... Uh, at some point, I guess around then, decided you wanted to take it a bit more seriously. What was the next step? Um, well, I started making mixtapes, making mixed CDs, because this is back in the era of CDs. Um, and I was handing out my CDs to a few local bars to try and get a DJ gig. And I ended up getting a gig in a, in a local bar. I'd handed out quite a lot of CDs, probably spent a few, a few Friday, Saturday nights going around these bars, handing out CDs. Um, and one of them gave me an opportunity, and I played played a few a few gigs in well, a few weeks in this bar, which wasn't very busy, so it, it didn't last very long. Um, and then I carried carried on handing out my CDs, and eventually got my first gig in a nightclub, um, which was in Liverpool. And it was really exciting for me; like it was a really big deal. Because um, you're from the rural, aren't you? So mm -hmm. the people who don't know the geography of this place, yeah. they're very close, but there's yeah. a big difference between them, isn't there? Yeah, you know, yeah, to, yeah. To, like, to, to graduate from one to the other is a big yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. It's like kind of going from your local town to the big city next to the local town. Mm. Yeah. So I went to this first gig, and it was the first time that I'd ever used the Pioneer C DJs, and it was it was really scary for me. Um, it kind of got thrown in at the deep end, and I was awful as well. I was really bad. Like I, I didn't have, I didn't even have enough music. I played for like it was like a five-hour set or something. The first like proper time I'd ever used CDJs, five-hour set. I probably had about twenty CDs with me with like ten tracks on each, and I remember I was so scared because I was like, I'm gonna have to repeat a tune. I'm going to have to repeat a tune. I didn't have any like big tunes. I didn't have any of like the tunes that the crowd wanted because I didn't like understand like. So where did the understanding came from? You know, because this is very, very normal, isn't it, DJ? I'm sure, yeah. Get out there, get in the limelight, learn on the job. Yeah. And you're not very good. You think you're mm. hopefully all right, but you're not. Where did the actual learning come? Where did, where did you turn the first corner and become what you would call a promising DJ, yeah. someone who's starting to get it? Um, well, I used to promote under 18s club nights. Um, like, this is probably a couple of years after that. Me and a friend, we started running under 18s club nights and in, like, town halls and stuff like that. And... I ended up DJing at the night and it was when I was DJing at my own event that I kind of realized what the DJ should be doing. Like oh, the DJ should be giving the crowd a good time. The DJ should be entertaining the people. And I, and I was able to see, I'm not really doing that. <laughs> How can I do that better? So because you were kind of the person employing yourself and paying your own wages yeah. kind of thing yeah, you yeah. suddenly realized well if i was employing a dj and it wasn't me this yeah. is what i'd need them to yeah, do yeah, yeah, so yeah, i yeah. better do it yeah yeah, yeah exactly right. that, yeah so that must have been a bit of a penny drop moment for you yeah i think so i would say that's probably the first time that i ever actually got slightly good at dj mm. before that i was a guy who would turn up with music that i really liked and beat match it nicely right okay which is which is it's cool but it's not gonna like it's, you're not gonna rock a crowd you're like you're not gonna that. win any fans like that yeah, yeah. no so you're playing at this point chart music for under 18s so i'm gonna uh, guess yeah it's it was still kind of like dance music tempo yeah like remixes and stuff okay so what happened next um 
I kind of progressed through the through the ranks in this club in Liverpool that I was working in. Worked in a couple of other clubs around Liverpool. Ended up getting some more gigs around clubs all around the north of England, like um, Yorkshire and Manchester and places. Um, and these were all these were all resident DJ gigs. So I was there was a point where I was I was DJing like six nights a week every single every single week, making really good money. And um, by this point, I'd started playing like open format because I was playing for a lot of student events. Um, so I found myself playing quite open format, playing a lot of R&B and hip hop tunes and sometimes even like party tunes in with the dance music that I was playing. Um, and during this period of my life, something inspired me to start making music. Something inspired me to kind of start trying to create the music that I wanted to hear mm. in my DJ sets. And I got really into making music, started doing it all day, every day. And then going to the club at night and testing what I'd made. Oh, what a lovely opportunity mm -hmm. to have. Yeah, yeah, literally. Be, and how long were you making music for then? Just, just and, you know, probably just started, living this double life, club yeah. DJ at night and producer in the day. Probably started in about 2014. And when I say started, I mean started doing it all the time. Mm -hmm. Like, properly started. Um, and the music I was making was... was House music, dance music. Okay. So you've got this life now where you're playing this kind of studenty sound mm -hmm. at night, yeah. but kind of credible house yeah, music yeah, yeah. in the day. Yeah. So I'm, and something gave, didn't it? Yeah, like so I'm doing all these I'm doing all these open format DJ gigs, playing right across the board. People just know me for being a good, entertaining DJ, using the mic and all that. And then I'm trying to also trying to build myself as this house music producer. And I was like, yeah, something's not really adding up here. Like if I'm trying to convince people that I'm a really cool house producer, I've kind of got to be that all the time. Like Your gigs so, have got to reflect it kind mm -hmm. of thing. So I, I kind of had a moment where I thought I need to stop doing all of these open format DJ gigs and I need to, even though that's what's paying the bills, I kind of got to step back from that. So I stepped out of all of these open format gigs and got myself two new resident DJ gigs where I was just playing house music. And I went from like working six nights a week to just working two nights a week, just earning what I needed to to get by. Mm. But I was able to play house music all it the time. It must have been a big decision, that, mm. to, to turn your back on that consistency and that money yeah, in order completely. to do what you really wanted yeah, yeah. to do. Yeah. And so then there was another big step, wasn't there? Because there was this, well, if I want to get taken seriously as a producer, mm. it's not yeah. really compatible with this resident dj lark yeah so there was there was a period where i was i was coming up the ranks as a producer and i was doing these resident dj gigs just two of them at the time the house music gigs and people were trying to people were trying to book me people were like oh are you free on saturday the whatever and i was like mm, i actually know i'm a resident dj um and i just had this realization like if i'm a resident dj people aren't going to take me seriously as an artist so i need to not be a resident dj so I like saved up quite a bit of money and just kind of went for it and took a leap of faith and said, I am no longer a resident DJ. I'm now an artist. And then made this massive transition, which is like scary even to think about hmm. where like I moved to London, decided to just be in the studio all the time and just become the artist. And what year was this? 2000 and 2016. 16. Okay. Mm -hmm. You just looked at your arm. my arm. Why did you, why did you look, at, why did you look um, at your arm? The date on my arm is the date when I got my first paycheck off a record label. Wow. So that's, and that's the 20th of the 1st, 2016. Okay. So James, I have to ask you this question. Yeah. How the hell did you end up having big chart hits? How did that fit into this formula of making <laughs> underground music and um, pivoting to house? Well, my first ever single was More Than Friends, which has got combined streams of half a billion. And like, it was a uh, top 10 record in four different countries. Um, so like, that's that that's amazing. And like, I'm so, so grateful for that. Mm. Um, but that wasn't intentionally what I set out to <laughs> it achieve with it. It wasn't part of the plan. No, it wasn't really part <laughs> of the plan. It was like, I was just trying to make really good dance music. And it wasn't really like, I'm trying to make a top 10 record. Like mm. when, even when I signed that record, like it wasn't, they didn't sign it for a lot of money or anything. It just really took off. Right. Um, and yeah, that's kind of just, 
just thought just, that's just the way it went, really. Yeah, and I guess the record labels, when they see you succeeding, they want more of the same. Exactly, and, exactly, yeah. And so you've kind of been quite successful as a, as a, a chart producer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but your DJ career, while, while succeeding, mm. really took a, a massive shot in the arm when you started realising you could document this as well mm -hmm. as just do it, right? Yeah, so by, by this point, when we're talking like more than friends time, that was 2017. Right, so in 2017, I've been DJing for nine years. Like, so I'm a pretty good DJ. Mm. Like, I'm doing some of the stuff that you know me for now. Um, not all of it, but some of it. And I had this massive opportunity because I'd had this big hit record. All of a sudden, I was doing really cool gigs. Like, I was playing a lot of clubs, playing a lot of festivals. And me and my friend Gucci, who some of you will know, um, we started we started filming all of the gigs. We started filming all the gigs and putting out videos. At first, we put out videos on Facebook, like very, very short clips from the gigs. And we started getting people's attention straight away because I had DJ skills. And we were just so consistent with it. We were putting out so many videos that people just kept kept coming back to see, oh, when's the next video out? And then we, we started putting those videos on YouTube as well. And we started getting quite a lot of attention for those videos. And at this point... This is when I guess a lot of people watching this story now will have first seen you. Probably. Because it's gone mm. pretty pretty into the stars since then. Yeah, your yeah, career yeah. has gone into the stars. Yeah. And your, your your reach, your YouTube channel reach, yeah, the yeah. reach of some of your biggest tricks online. Mm. They were eventually um, what put you on our radar. And we were kind of deconstructing your mixes for our yeah, audience yeah, before we'd yeah. even spoken to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it brings us to where we are now. You know, yeah. we're... we're, we're sharing your skills with the world and so on but it's not it's not finished it's not you're not a finished article you're still a work in progress oh, yeah, of course yeah you've got this you've still got this dichotomy going on between your kind of pop side and your house yeah, yeah, side yeah, 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 and yeah. you know it seems like you, you haven't really solved that one yet because you were the, yeah, yeah. you were the, a... you were the you were the chart dj making underground house music and now you're the the your music's in the charts and you're playing underground house gigs kind of, kind of thing there's something yeah, going yeah. on in the middle so yeah. what's the plan now moving forward to kind of bring everything together to, to your brand. Yeah, like it's it's kind of it's kind of just figuring out how to connect the how to connect the the sound that I produce for the clubs with the sound that I produce for the radio, if you mm. will, with the DJ skills that people see. And it's figuring out how to bring all those things together and really solidify like what the brand is for everybody. And just to kind of, yeah, just really explain what James Hype is to people. Yeah, getting mm. the message across, mm -hmm. whether they're a 12-year-old girl listening to the radio or whether yeah. they're a, someone right in the middle of the dance floor at one of your gigs. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Awesome. Right, well, now you know a bit of James's story, there are rules. There are things that this guy <laughs> does that underpin that success. And if you want some of this to rub off on you, you need to hear them from him. So in the next video, James is going to talk you through his 10 rules of DJing.